All right. All right, should I let everyone in? Sounds good, I'm going mute. How do I let everyone in at once? Hello. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. I unmuted myself. Hi, friend. Hi, Sunny. I mean, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hi, Marna, Sandy, and Rick. Haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you. I see you, but can't hear you, but that's okay. Hi, Michael. There's the Goldbergs. Uh, back then, my, my dream job was to be a physician. And for me, medicine has always been the perfect balance and combination of pure science and the human connection. In Temple. They're going to be in Temple from here on out. <clears throat> oh, really? I hear you, Sandy. <laughs> I'll have to keep my mouth closed. Or put yourself on mute one or the other. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. You can hear me too. Did everyone else get kicked off and then have to reboot? Uh -huh.
hear me okay okay so you've been listening to this melody over and over again and it's we're gonna just literally sing to it but as a nigun rabbi conover i'm gonna start our little nigun while you buzz around is that okay i thought really me not loud enough how's that even possible how's it possible okay so this is a nigun it's it's how we sing together without needing to be bogged down by words. Silly words, who needs them? So we just start off like this. And this is brought by our dear Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. It starts off like this. Just try that. And then it just goes like this. to be a little note that tricks you. It keeps you alive and awake so you go Shabbat Shalom, and I'll just say, uh, Ethan, I have a sense that this might be what other people would say as well. 
that could be my entire Shabbat, <laughs> just to be able to sing that nigun with this community for the entirety of our time. I agree. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, thank Ethan. you. And Hannah and Minkyu and Cantor, thank you for making it come alive so beautifully. I just love being back here for Shabbat. I do too. And I'll just say also that last week, uh, last Shabbat, I was in New York. Uh, I was in New York because in Riverdale, we had a, a family friend's uh, bar mitzvah, and it was extraordinary. And I love that we, we kind of did something that's very much like this week's Torah portion, where Eli, my, my son and I, we lech lechad, we, we went forth. Um, and we went forth, and the whole idea is that you go lech, like to go, but then lecha, to be able in some way to, to find yourself. And what I loved about our journey when we went to New York together, so it was me and my 13-year-old uh, son, was that we went away, and yet in some ways it was just this affirmation of who we are at our best, being able to explore together and uh, not have to watch Squid Games, uh, not have to be distracted by anything except for what we wanted to be able to be distracted by. And so we got to just talk and be and adventure and explore. And I love that we can do that geographically like our ancestors who went lech lecha. I love it that we, Eli and I got to do that geographically last week by going to New York. But I love that every Shabbat, we're invited to do this temporally, where we get to just take the time to explore and adventure and go for ourselves. And in some ways, like going through our prayer book and all of these prayers together and these songs, we have these ancient ways to explore we have these more contemporary ways to explore, but all of it we do for ourselves, but in community. Well, that's a blessing. And it's wonderful when we are able on a Shabbat like this to celebrate simchas in our community. And one great simcha that is coming up, one great celebration that's coming up is that Adam Krut will become a bar mitzvah. And we are so very excited. So Adam, we want to invite you to come to the Bima now with your mom, Meredith, your father, Jason, and your sister, Alana, to be able to light the candles and then lead us in Kiddush. So you can put your prayer book here if you'd like. And we turn to page 120 and welcome in Shabbat with light. Aruch Atadonai Eloheinu Malach Haolam Asher Kiddishanu Bumitvotam Ritzivanu Lehad Likner Lehad Likner Shal And as Adam comes over to lead us in the Kiddush, we find the words on page 123. I'll say just a couple of directions um, for those of us who are joining from home and for us here. 
If you're joining from home, you can open up that link uh, to the prayer book. And you can always just insert the numbers at the bottom of the page there on that first, um, that first screen, say page 123 in this case, to take you directly to the page that we're on. And then also during our service, there are times that we have this different prayer choreography. So there are times that we, we stand if we're physically able, but that's to show that we're rising in attention. And so for those of us who aren't able to stand, we can always be able to be alert at those times with greater intention um, as we do for our kiddish in just a moment. I'll also say that during our service, for those of you who might not read the Hebrew yeah. script, you'll see that there's going to be the Hebrew script. Underneath that is a transliteration or next to that is a transliteration. Underneath is a literal translation of these blessings and prayers. And then on the other side of the page is always going to be a poetic translation. And so we'll invite you tonight to explore the prayer book as you will. And any time that I say rise, I mean rise in the way that your spirit and your body dictates. So as we turn to page 123, we rise. Bore Puri Hagafen Baruch Atadonai Elohi Numelacholam Asher Kirishana Bivitswata Viratsavanu Vishabat Kocho Vahava Ratson In Hulanu Zikaran Lase Vreshi Ki Huyon Tahila the micro echo dash the hair the heat be drying he van over to uvon to vidasha misko hamim vishabat kocha behava uvraton in Hazanu Barukata Adonai Mikadesh Hashabat Amen. Lachayam. Yeah. And Mazel Tov. Take your book, sweet pea. Thank you so much. Thanks. Great job, Adam. And we can be seated if we were standing as we turn to page 138. We sing the words of Lecha Dodi, in this case, a Kabbalistic poem that's set to music that uh, invites in Shabbat as a Sabbath bride. For us, we do verses one, two, five, and nine. And then on that ninth and final verse, we rise, we turn to the entrance of the sanctuary and we welcome in the Sabbath bride. Mike, oh. Uh, Sabbath bride, Sabbath bride, can we start again? <laughs> Shamor Vizahor, Bidi Borecha, Hishmiya Nu Elham Yuchar, Haruna Echar, Kushmo Echar, the Shem Mutifer and Valitila Lecha Dodi, Lika Kala, Penesha. Shabbat, 
Beautiful entrance as we welcome Shabbat. Oh, we shalom, ha teret bala, gam besimcha, uvtso ola, chochem munei am sebula, oh, we We remain standing as we turn to page 146 for our Baruch Hu. Lai, 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 lai. Lai 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 Baruchu et Adonai Ham Nevorah Baruch Adonai Ham Nevorah Le'olam Ha'es Lai 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 Lai, page one fifty. Page one fifty. Ahavat Olam Beit Yisrael Amcha Okay, now I know you. We should be no come no. Nasiyah bechukeha. Please mark the right or a teha. Uve mitzvoteha leolam ba.
Yahavta Eid Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levavcha Bechol Nafshecha Bechol Meodecha Dayu Harvarim Ha'ele Asher Anochim Tavcha Hayom Alevavecha Bishinan Tam Levanecha Vribarta Ba'am Bishiftecha Bevetecha Uvlachtecha Vaderech Ushok Becha Ukumecha Ukshar Tam Lehot Ayadecha Dayul Totafo Veneinecha Uktatam al mezuzot betecha uvi sharecha leman tiskaru vasitem et komit votai vitem kiroshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem asher hotseiti etchem meret mitzrayim vihiot lachem lelohim. I So a lot of the rabbis of ancient times were trying to figure out why was it that Abraham and Sarah were called on by God? There's nothing that explains why it was that he went from Haran, originally from Ur, and then that Abraham and Sarah were called on by God to go forth to the land that God would show them and then there be great blessings for everyone. Didn't say why, why were they chosen? And so there's a Midrash that tries to explain. And this Midrash says that when, when, when Moses, uh, sorry, when Abraham was walking, there was a palace that was on fire. And everyone would say, there must be nobody minding that palace, no king or queen in charge because the palace is burning. And so it was with the world, that the world around them was burning in some ways. So if this world was burning, if there was so much going wrong, was there a God that existed? And so Abraham asked, is there a God? Is there one God? And God said, I am master of this universe. <laughs> However, if we want to see that burning will stop, if we want to see that this world will be repaired, I depend on people with tzedek umishpat, or with righteousness and justice, to help be a partner in repairing the world. Abraham and Sarah understood that, and so they were chosen to be partners with God. Every time we sing the Mechamocha, we see that God continued to make covenants with people who would do this in this world. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, all the way up until all of us today. We turn to page 158 for Micha Mocha as we sing the song of redemption. Micha Mocha Vaeli Madonai Micha Mocha Nelava Kodesh Nora to Hilo Oh say Peleh Nora to Hilo Oh say Peleh Malchut echa rau banecha, vokei ayam lifnei Moshe u'Miriam, zeli anu ve'amru. Adonai imloch, Adonai imloch, le'olam va'en. Lai, 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 well, if I'm putting on this mask, then something special must be happening. We must be inviting guests to the Bima who are not really guests on this Bima, but part of our family. We invite Hannah and Ethan now as they come to the Ark to receive their Hebrew names in their covenant with God, we invite the entire congregation, please rise. Yes, there's only one, there's only one way to respond to this. So we have been led by the two of you so often in love and in song 
And so tonight, what an honor to be able to convey to you our welcome into this community that you have not only been a part of, but have led so beautifully for so many years, but now you're entering this community as Jews. It's extraordinary. I know we won't. <laughs> yes. So we're all crying up here <laughs> because for us, truly, uh, as emotional as it is for you, you should know how emotional it is for all of us. You are two great gifts of our community, truly. And so tonight we will convey or we'll give you your Hebrew names, but you know, really, we're affirming your Jewish souls. And also we do so with the embrace, not only of this large community and also this beautiful, intimate family community <laughs> whom we love and adore and who you will always be tied to in your deepest, deepest roots. And so in this way, then this is our entire family affirming who you are as two Jews. So I want to say a word about your Hebrew names and then invite you to hold, you're each gonna hold a Torah. <laughs> this is super fun. So you have chosen beautiful names for yourselves. So Hannah, your Hebrew name, Hana Zimra. Hana, which embodies you perfectly. I don't know whether when you were named, if they knew of the Hebrew origin. But Hana comes from the word Chain, which means grace. And you have shown such grace in all the ways in which you live your life, the way that you pay such close attention to what should be in this world. And then what do you do? But you open your huge, beautiful heart, and then you just embrace all of it with such grace and beauty. And your middle name, Zimra, that you've chosen for yourself. Zimra means both music and song, and it also, in the biblical sense, can also mean strength. And so in this way, then, you have led this community with this strong song, and it perfectly embodies you because you can only lead us in it because that's who you are. And that's what we feel every time you lead us with your violin. And then... Here you are, Ethan. Your Hebrew name, Eitan Zimra. Eitan, which means strength, but it also means stability. And what I love about you, and this is a rare gift, is that you feel the depths of life, both the highs and the lows, and then you're able to be steady with that, to be able to say that there's so much opposition and contrast in this world. And yet it all is one big hole, W-H-O-L-E. And in that way, then you're able to be, to be the stable force of strength and goodness in our community and in your beloved couple. Zimra, also with song, you chose to be able to have a name that you both share in this way. How beautiful. And so we're grateful now to be able to give you these two Torah scrolls. We'll invite you to stand just right here. Yes. <laughs> we'll invite you to turn to this beautiful community as we sing with you the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Wow. All right. So I'll take this. And so, Eitan, Zimra, then Avraham Vasara, your adoptive parents, and Hana Zimra, Bat Avraham Vasara. We are grateful now to have you answer these questions together. You're each other's lifelines. Do you choose to enter the eternal covenant between God and the people of Israel and to become Jews of your own free will? 
Do you accept Judaism to the exclusion of all other faiths? Do you pledge your loyalty to Judaism and to the Jewish people under all circumstances? Well, this seems redundant, but do you promise to establish a Jewish home and participate actively in the synagogue <laughs> and the Jewish community? Yeah. Do you commit yourself to the pursuit of Torah and Jewish knowledge? And if you should have children, will they be raised as Jews? Wow. So we're all ready to be able to welcome you into this community as two Jewish people. And so with that, we can sing the Shahafianu, thanking God for allowing us to reach this beautiful time. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehechianu v'kiemanu v'higianu l'azman hazeh the rabbis ask a lot of questions about how it was that Abraham and Sarah were chosen um, to go on this great adventure of being able to lead the Jewish people and to found a new faith. But they never said, wait, how did Abraham and Sarah ever find each other? And I have to say that tonight, Ethan and Hannah, we are so grateful that you've found each other and that on this Bema on Sunday, you will be <laughs> married to each other. Yay! Yes. I promise I won't cry then. <laughs> <laughs> and so as we tonight have the opportunity to bless the two of you, we want to acknowledge that your great love is such a gift. It's so crazy how in a couple, sometimes you pray that you are able to make metaphorical music together that you're able to make music together in the way that you do so seamlessly and beautifully. And then to be able to live that out in your lives, that you're able to wake up next to each other, and then you're able to go on with life as individuals, but always with each other in heart. That's a beautiful gift. We're so grateful that you're going to be getting married and we're so grateful, so grateful to God that you found each other. We truly are a blessing. And so we have this opportunity. We can't help it. We want to put our hands on you. Yes. To be able to bless you with a threefold benediction. <laughs> May God continue to bless you and protect you. May God's presence continue to shine upon you and through you. May you always feel yourself lifted in a divine presence, blessing you and bringing you peace. Amen. Amen. I see you climbing. I saw that. <laughs> but but I'll say that, that that Jeremy's aim was so great. So good. That it actually didn't knock down one of those candles, which I thought for sure it would. <laughs> and so we remain standing for our Amida, page 164. Na 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 na
As soon we will lech lecha go to ourselves in silent meditation. We have an invitation from John O'Donoghue. May you recognize in your life the presence, power, and light of your soul. May you realize that you are never alone, that your soul in its brightness and belonging connects you intimately with the rhythm of the universe. May you realize that the shape of your soul is unique, that you have a special destiny here, that behind the facade of your life, there is something beautiful and eternal happening. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, an expectation with which God sees you in every moment. We continue now with silent prayer. And when you're finished with your personal prayer, please be seated. Hey 
657, or you can just lie, lie along with me. Ojavo shalom malenu, Ojavo shalom malenu, Ojavo shalom malenu, le al kulam salam, alenu me al kolam salam, 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 alenu me al kolam salam, salam. So if it wasn't too cheesy for John Lennon, then I think it's not too cheesy for us to say these words and believe them. Soon there will be peace among us. Soon there will be peace among us. Soon there will be peace among us. Peace for us all. You try it. Soon there will be peace among us. Soon there will be peace among us. Soon there will be peace among us, peace for our souls. Anybody? Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, oh, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, oh, hey yo, hey yo. It never ceases to surprise me that in our Torah portion, as soon as Abraham and Sarah get to the place that God says that God's going to show them, the land of Canaan, what happens next? But there's a famine and they have to go down to Egypt. So the Zohar also is like, what is happening here? Why is this that, that this is happening? That they go to the chosen place and then there's a famine and they have to go down to a place that symbolizes suffering and pain. And what the Zohar said is that the only way that Abraham and Sarah could be the leaders that they need to be is to understand that, that suffering exists and that they need to know that when suffering exists, they need to be with people as they're suffering. And that in some ways that brings about the healing but then can lift us back up. And so as we then, as a community, think about those who are, in, who are in need of healing, those who we want to lift up, those of us who also need some lifting on this Shabbat, we think about them and we think about ourselves. We turn to page 374, sorry, 371. For the words of Misha Bera, and I'll share some of the names of the people whom we are thinking about on this Shabbat. Thinking of Sarah Golub and Louise Chapman, Anthony Barnes and Mary Spriggs, Marcella Wilson and family, Jim Hardy and Max Cohn and Leanne Edwards, Winifred Halsey and Joan Stockhoff, Hilde Leibowitz and Heidi Hobbs. Gordon Campbell and Frederick Woods, Pat Pizzicaro, who are still suffering, Daniel Weinzerl and Thelma Still, Zoe Rhodes, Nitson, and Jillian Wolf, Eugene Pergamont, Richard Marco and Sharon Schwartz, sorry, Sharon Schwartz, Chuck Abrahams, Jonathan Spitz, Elaine Baddock and Javier Escalante, Sheldon Steinloff and Nick Adams, Roberta Sanino, MD, Marion Kramer, Susan Levine, David and Barbara Sussman, Nina Silverstein and Jan the Janice family, 
Pam Zolney, Don Sable, Jim Clemens, and Glenn Pressman. Taisha Rogers, and Rick and Marianne. Deborah Siegel, Krista Golden, Susan White Smith, Tammy Mormino, Perry Kaminsky, Cheryl Tanita, Dee Dee Cohn and Abner Drucker, Esther DeCarker, Flo Bernberg, Ruth Opler, Carrie Gibbs, Mark Sacker, Gil Rothner and Howard Nagelberg, Dennis Tossi and Lori Barish and Bart Barish, Natasha Stoller, Greg Sessler, and Dr. Fanaroff. We hold all of them in our hearts, as well as those who have gone unnamed out loud, but who we hold in our hearts, the Misha Berach. Misha it wouldn't be a third Shabbat of the month if we weren't going to celebrate some birthdays. Both my mothers have birthdays this month. Oh, I love that. Not only that, we have two incredible people on our staff who's had birthdays just this week, one of whom is with us right now, Lori Curtis. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) And if there's anyone else who's here who has a birthday this week, if you wouldn't mind either standing or raising your hand so we can celebrate with you. Um, and so I'll say this to those of us who are celebrating a, a birthday in this month. What I love this is that we month. have left Laha. Ooh. In this month. You know what? I, we see you. You don't need yeah, to Yeah, you don't stand. have to stand up. You don't stand up. Oh, look, look, look. Sammy. I got if you. If you wanted to, you could. Oh, we saw you. We already saw you. We <laughs> love that you're here. <laughs> Colleen, we love that we're celebrating. What's the date? Oh, I love that. We share a lot of special birthdays. I love that. (laughs) Lori, do you want to share when your birthday was? The 12th. The 12th, Sam, what about you? All right. So I love this because we have this Torah portion of Lech Lecha, which is exciting and adventurous. But we're also in Mar Cheshvan, which is this time where we say there are no holidays. Let's take it easy that it might be this bitter month of Cheshvan, but for some of us, it feels pretty celebratory to be able to say, we don't need anything else, but a few great birthdays to celebrate. That makes Cheshvan what it is. And so we pray that you continue to have adventures where you don't need to go anywhere, where you get to be able to have a month and a life where things sometimes can feel calm and good, where you can be celebrated just as you are. And in that way, then, may this be a great and healthy year. Oh, enjoy. Happy birthday, English Hebrew. Oh, yes, please. All right. Yom Huled at Samea. Yom Huled at Samea. Yom Huled at Samea. Yom Huled at Samea. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Helene and Sammy and Lori and everyone else around me, happy 
Oh, I mean, and this would not be complete if we didn't give a shout out to Cookie Marks. Oh Cookie's my God, Cookie, this Cookie's month. out there. Happy birthday, Cookie. Happy birthday, Cookie. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> so, I don't know about you, but we got the three month free trial of Apple Plus streaming for one reason and one reason only. F9, The Fast and the Furious Saga. Anybody else? <laughs> well, let's just be honest. We got it for Ted Lasso. And every time we turn it on, we see the beginning of a commercial where 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars plays in the background. Someone pulls a fabulous suit from a fancy closet, slips on a dress sock, picks out an expensive tie, and we never really saw the reveal of who it was because we always skip to the, tr the trailer to get to our own 24 magic experience with our beloved coach and his crazy team. But one night we watched it all the way through. So we bopped our heads to the beat as we continued to watch the man donning that fancy suit and putting on the finest Italian leather shoes and choosing an extravagant watch and finally looking in the mirror to reveal John Stewart, looking much older than when most of us saw him seven years ago. So, ah, he exclaims, what the hell happened to my face? And then the title, title screen flashes the words, the problem with John Stewart. And the camera cuts back to him muttering, why would I go back to a visual medium? I could have done a podcast. We are a society that is face obsessed. And we are learning about the perils of this obsession. Francis Haugen released thousands of pages of internal documents to the Wall Street Journal and then testified before Congress stating, I'm here today because I believe Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, and weaken our democracy. Now, I believe that many of us intuited all of these things, but to see them revealed so starkly in the journal and in her testimony is nevertheless startling. 32% of teen girls so that when they felt bad about their bodies, Instagram made them feel worse. This was released in a March 2020 slide presentation that was posted on Facebook's eternal internal message board. We make body image issues worse for one in three teen girls, said one slide from 2019. Teens blame, blame Instagram for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression, said another slide. This reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. And among teens who reported suicidal thoughts, 13% of British users and 6% of American users traced their desire to kill themselves to Instagram, one presentation showed. For those of us born before 1990, we remember how hard it was to lech lecha, to set out to become ourselves, distinct from our parents' house when we were adolescents. Desperate to be accepted by our peers, we wanted to distinguish ourselves from others and yet simultaneously and seamlessly fit in. Now imagine trying to do that awkward and uncomfortable dance while online. On social media, many teens think about themselves as brands, not people. And they wanna stand out while fitting in, packaging their experiences to garner more likes or to put it in more contemporary terms. They feel that they need to produce content for their audience. In his recent special, at times very dark, dark comedy special, Bo Burnham records himself in his house during the pandemic. 
Through song and small bits, he explores the pitfalls of social media as he finds himself falling into a dark depression. At one point on the floor of his messy room, curled up under a blanket with eyes closed, he growls. You know, maybe allowing giant digital media corporations to exploit the neurochemical drama of our children for profit, you know, maybe that was a bad call for us. Maybe the flattening of the entire subjective human experience into a lifeless exchange of value that benefits nobody except for a handful of bug-eyed salamanders in Silicon Valley, well, maybe that was, that was not so good. He was in a dark depression, yes, but it makes us think. And in an article on Generation Z, the internet, and the mental health crisis, Dr. Zachary Blumkin, a professor of psychiatry at Columbia University, well, he said, I think one of the things that older generations tend to do is we minimize the issues that the younger generations are facing and sort of indicate that they're too sensitive or too fragile. But the truth is, we don't know what it's like growing up and being constantly bombarded by all that information. It's possible the world hasn't changed. It's possible that the world is even better than it used to be. But the fact is, they're still getting bombarded with more negative information than any previous generation. And even those of us who are not in Gen Z or those of us who don't have children in that generation, well, we can still relate. I'm sure I'm not the only person here who has stayed up past my bedtime doom scrolling, going down a rabbit hole on social media of stories related to a particularly horrible world event. And Facebook and Twitter and Instagram make it so easy to hop from story to story, knowing just what I crave. And millennials and Gen X and boomers and beyond know well the experience of putting up a post about our family or a commentary on something big going on in the world and then refreshing our screens every few minutes to see who's responded. The title of the portion, this week's Torah portion, Lech Lecha, seems to give some precious advice for how to deal with the pervasive and destructive social media platforms. Lech Lecha. And while I don't usually love the King James translation of the Bible, in this case, it seems apt. Get thee out. Or as Rashi interprets it, for your own benefit, for your own good, leave. But for most of us, that's just not practical. Social media puts us in touch with old friends and new ones. For many of us, it's a connector to community. We can limit our intake of it, but we can't leave it entirely. And we can run, but we can't hide from the itch that social media scratches. There's no denying that we crave these likes. And who are we kidding? How much more do we love the love emojis? And it's not just a shallow craving. It runs deep. Decades ago, I was in a spiritual direction class during seminary taught by a beloved professor and spiritual guru named Carol Ox. In each session, students could take the class down nearly any path that would help us later offer our own spiritual advice. advice. So one session, a classmate said, to be honest, I don't have a lot of self-love. If I want to build that now in myself, how can I do that? And Professor Ox paused and then said, you can't. Only other people can. So surround yourself with good people. Let them get to know you. And let them tell you how much they appreciate you. The strange thing about self-love is that it can only be cultivated externally among people who care. To feel that you love yourself, find a community who loves you. And teaching upon teaching in Judaism, 
encourages us to find ourselves in community. Do not separate yourself from community. All Jews are responsible for one another as a community. And in fact, the most famous Midrash from this week's parasha or this week's Torah portion does not emphasize the singular command, lech lecha, to go for yourself, but the community that you build on that journey of going. Our tradition tells us that when Abraham and Sarah left their home and made their way from Ur to Haran and across the miles to the place that God showed them, they traveled in a large tent open on all sides. And with each stop along the way, they gathered more people into their tent. And as the Midrash teaches, so many souls were gathered there under the wings of the Shekhinah. Everyone was welcome. And of course, they didn't have social media then. But if they did, I think they would have used it. I think they would have posted all kinds of pictures, people of different sizes and shapes and various skin tones and complexions and young and old and everyone in between and people with disability and able-bodied athletes. And they would have posted all over social media, not to say, had a great time, wish you were here, you missed a lot, isn't my life great? But instead, they would have posted because they wanna say that we're still having a great time or maybe we're actually having a tough time, but the only thing missing is you. So come along or if it's easier, we'll come to you. That's what they would have posted. Like many things, social media can be used for ill or for good. It's our choice what to do with it. I suggest instead of doom scrolling or vapid face posting, we look for things that, are, that run a little deeper than skin deep. Like Rabbi Singer's Instagram modern ritual that makes meaningful Jewish rituals accessible to us. Or the Instagram of Harrison, Harrison Schwartz, our bar mitzvah from last week, who shares his incredible gift of applying makeup to himself. He has been an inspiration for young people across the globe to share their whole selves with their friends and their family or Instagram accounts like Dr. Colleen Reichman's that create community for people struggling with mental illness. I love her recent post. She wrote, I refuse to find myself at 80 years old, realizing that I spent the majority of my time on this earth trying to make my thighs smaller. <laughs> One of my favorite moments in this sanctuary with our friends out there too. One of my favorite moments always on a Friday night or on a Sunday morning with our youth is when we sing, hey oh. And then there's that moment. I don't know how many of you here were comfortable enough to have that moment where you just throw your hands back and you just lean back. And it's almost like you're doing this mini trust fall. I do it too. I love that I know that I have this community here where I can do that. And I know it's hard to replicate it online, it's really hard. But this is a place where we can throw our hands in the air and not as a sign of, of a threat or of giving up, but it's this kind of trust ball where we can just throw up our hands and lean into our fullest selves and know we'll be caught and embraced and celebrate it. When we're feeling nervous or scared, there's someone to reassure us, I've got you. So as we continue to trek through this sometimes lonely and often scary and sometimes lovely and always big wide world, lech lecha, go ahead. Step out there for yourself and know there's going to be friends, real friends to meet you there from here. My hope is that we find and create more places out there that reflect the beauty and acceptance of this community of Sholem. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Get your, get your hands up. 
Get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Get your, get your hands up. Get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Are you feeling nervous? Are you having fun? It's almost over, it's just begun. Don't overthink this, look in my eye. Don't be scared, don't be shy. Come on in, the water's fine. We're going to go where everybody knows. Everybody knows, everybody knows. We're going to go where everybody knows. Where everybody knows. Come on, get your hands up. Get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Get your, get your hands up. Get on out of your seat, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Heads down, pray for me. Heads down now, pray for me. Get your, get your hands up. Get on out of your seat, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Are you feeling nervous? Are you having fun? It's almost over, it's just begun. Don't overthink this, look in my eye. Don't be scared, don't be shy. Come on in, the water's fine. We're going to go where everybody knows. Everybody knows everybody. We're going to go where everybody knows. Everybody knows. Get your, get your hands up. Get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Heads down, pray for me, heads down now. Pray for me, heads down, pray for me, heads down now. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. You, you found that. I, you know what, my sweet musician rabbi. <laughs> you know, Bo Burnham is just, uh, it's, it's really, uh, he's, he's something to behold. And, uh, and I, I appreciate how much he's been, all of the, the, his songs from this special yeah, have been beautiful. reposted by people then sharing their own experiences, um, going through depression and coming out of it and finding community. And so grateful that we're able to do that. And I have to say that the first announcement that we have tonight is about our support groups uh, that we offer mm -hmm. within JCFS, our uh, a wonderful community in the Jewish community uh, where we share. Uh, we have many, many support groups, including healing during the seasons and evening of support in fall, and also hungry to be heard, disordered eating in the Jewish community. They're open and available, and so you can find um, details on our website to be able to, to see um, how and where that might be meeting. And on Wednesday, from 6.30 to 8, our amazing teacher, Mitchell Brown, I know this may shock some of you, but before I went to seminary, I was a theater major. I know. It's weird. <laughs> I felt weird there. Uh, this is going to be a discussion on Shakespeare. Um, discussing four plays, and it's it's really going to be quite remarkable. Mitchell is an extraordinary teacher, so that is on Wednesday at six thirty. And you can find details for how to sign up for that. That'll be online, and it's yep. going to be looks like seven week sessions. So that should be wonderful. And then we also um, the, a week from this Saturday we'll have a special mishpacha or family havdala on the lake, and that will be at. 4.30, and again, you can look on our website to find more details. And finally, we have a pizza tour um, with none other than Steve Delinsky, um, and that's going to be Saturday, November 13th. That's for our 40s and 50s group, 
Um, it's going to be uh, the deadline to register is at the end of October. That's why we're announcing it now. We perceive that that's going to fill up pretty quickly. So we wanna make sure that you know if you're in the 40s, if you're in your 40s or 50s-ish and would like to join us on this uh, tour, um, then please uh, come to our website, find out the details. Saturday, November 13th at 11 o'clock oh, with our glory. very own Steve Delinsky to show us around how to eat great pizza in Chicago mm -hmm. as though we needed somebody to tour that. But, you know, it's always great to have time with him and wonderful to get to eat uh, Damien's favorite food um, and plenty of it all over the city of Chicago. Love pizza. We are now turning to the bottom of page 586 for Alenu. And, uh, and we invite everyone, please rise. Alenu le shabeach ladon hakol, latet kidulal yotzev reshit, shelo atzanu kegoye haratzot, velo samanu kemishpachot ha'adama, shelo sam chelkenu kachem, vegor alenu kechol hamonam. Vanachnu korim, umishtachavim, umodim, lifne melech, mache hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. Venemar, vahayanu nai, melech al koharet, vayom hahu, vayom hahu, ye adonai echad. Ushmo, ushmo. And we know that there are people who are joining us on this Shabbat because they are observing a yard site or they are in mourning. Uh, and so we want to make sure that as we are sharing names on this Shabbat of those who have passed from this earth, that we realize um, this beautiful teaching from John O'Donohue. And he says, when we love another heart and allow it to to love us, we journey deep below time into the, that eternal weave where nothing unravels. Or as it is said in the Song of Songs, that love is stronger than death. And so on this Shabbat, we share the names of those we're remembering, those who passed from this earth in recent days, Brian Schiffer, Dana Kroll, Suzanne DeGraff, Edward A. Fox, and Lois Berman, as well as marking the yard sites of Philip Abrams, Bert Bart Barish, Burton Bart Barish, Lloyd J. Barson, MD, Meyer Bloomfeld, Pearl Burton, Dorothy Danhauser, Joseph Eckstein, Barbara Feldman, Lillian Frankel, Meyer Garfin, Ross Garfinkel, Jerome Gerstel, Shirley Goglian, Anna Golub, Mildred Kazowski, Thomas Ross Culley, Lena Marks, Gail Mertz, Mary Pillay, Calvin Schneider, Dorothy Farsh Simon, Anne Gross Smoller, Rhea Stacks, sorry, Ray Stacks, Alexander Schwartzman, Marie Sandler Vancura, Morris Verson, Kate Luria Weil, Bertha Weinstein, and Aaron Golden, as well as Magna Slowick, Jackson Thorburn, sorry, Jackson Thorburn, Kay Kleinman, Dorothy Danhauser, Anna Abrams, Howard V. Holm, Sandra Goinscher, Sherry Camico Goodman, Dan Greenberg, Louis Landsberg, MD, William Dame, Hal Kay, Rebecca Luker, Jane Powell, Juliana Schaefer Sanchez. Let me say that differently. Juliana Sanchez Schaefer, Michael Cooper, Grayson Stanton Hall III, and Sandra Ottenstein. We hold them in our hearts. Thank you, Glory. As we say the words of Kadishia Tom the Mourner's Kaddish on page 598. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Meraba, Bialma, Divra, Hirute, Bialmlich, Malhute, 
בחיי חון וביום החון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל. בעגלה ובזמן קרי ואמרו, יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולעמי עלמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא. ויתהדר ויתהלה ויתהלל שמי דפרישה. לילה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה. תושבחתה ונחמתה. תאמירן בעלמה ואמרו. אמן. יהי שלום הרבה מן שמיה. וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. הוא עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. הוא עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל So we say again to the crew family, Mazel Tov, we're very excited. That's all right, you'll let Adam know just how excited we are for him. And uh, Ethan and Hannah, we couldn't be more excited, more grateful for all of your love and the way that you will be celebrating on Sunday. So grateful that your family and friends are with us on this Shabbat. And we are also <laughs> grateful that you've brought us this beautiful nigun that we can close our service with, just as we began this beautiful circle of community, <laughs> love, fun on this Shabbat. Do you remember this? Shabbat Shalom. That was called Ethan's Nigun. Shabbat Shalom. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov, Adam. <laughs> Thank you.